In Trellis graphics, it's possible to look at multivariate data sets and to investigate patterns in there using the trellising layout, which is conditioning by dividing your data set into subsets. And the subsets are created by using various variables, either factors, so categorical variables that split nicely into groups, or you can divide up into ranges if you have a continuous variable. Then what we do is we look at graphs of the subsets of the data shown so that there are common scales etc and symbols and you can look for patterns and see whether that pattern is consistent between the levels of a particular factor. And you can work with one, two, three or more factors but obviously it gets harder to understand and interpret what's going on the more facts you got. So in R we've got the lattice graphics package and this package, which we load into our session with the require command, can be used to create trellis graphics. So we can look at two data sets. First one, carbon dioxide uptake in grass plants. This is one of the data sets available within R. And what we've got in this data set is 84 rows and 5 columns of data. We can take a look at the start of the data set with the command head. And CO2 is the name of the object. We see that we've got information about which plant measurement was taken on, type of plant, treatment applied, chilled, non-chilled, the concentration measurement was taken, and then the uptake, which is our response variable. So what we would want to plot is the uptake against concentration, and in lattice graphics we've got the XY plot, but we want a separate plot based on the two types, Quebec and Mississippi. So our command here has got our y variable followed by the x variable using the formula which appear across a lot of functions in R. The vertical bar indicates conditioning so the type here indicates we want a separate plot for each of the levels of type in our data set and the data equals tells R where to look for the data. So if we run that and just drag the actual graph over here you can see we've got the plot concentration x-axis uptake y-axis and a separate plot for Quebec and Mississippi, which are the factor levels of the type variable. Now what we could do, the treatment is chilled and non-chilled, so we can create an array of graphs based on the types, the two types and the two treatments, and we do type star treatment, and this creates a 2x2 two two array in this particular case. So that's the only change to our function call. And here we see that we had Quebec and Mississippi previously as those were the types and those go into columns 1 and 2 and now we've got the rows for the chilled data and the non-chilled data so we can see that this general increasing pattern of uptake going up towards the limit with increasing concentration but the chilled Mississippi has the lowest uptake of all four of the combinations non-chilled Mississippi is better or larger uptake compared to the chilled still less than the Quebec both chilled and non-chilled. So what we could have then done is we've got a variable plant and if we submit this command groups equals plant what happens here is that within each of these graphs there's a separate color for each of the individual plants. Now there's a slight problem with this particular graph because there are 12 different plants but by default the trellis graphics define seven different colors so some of these colors have been used consistently across the different plants. So what we could do is we could change the symbols so that they are solid, which might make it easier to view. But this time here, we'll have a separate plot for each plant, hence the bar followed by plant. But now we'll look at the treatments of which there are two different ones and to plot that out as separate colored points within each of the panels. So to create and change part of the theme because lattice works with themes to define how things look. We first of all get the current parameter setting for the trellis.par.get function, save it as an object new theme. Then we extract the superposed symbol element, which is to do with if you've got different groups of data and you have different symbols that you plot on the graph, that's where we get the superposed symbol part of the theme and PCH corresponds to point shape. So basically here we're using shape 16 which is a solid circle. I'm repeating it seven times because I mentioned previously there are seven default groups and then the trellis.par.set 
sets our new theme. So just submit those commands and then we run a simple example here. So now we see we've got 12 panels for each of the 12 plants in the experiment and the different colours in each one corresponds to which group the data was in and the group is the particular treatment that was applied. So the treatment is chilled and non-chilled. So now we'll move on to a very simple example of match results from Australian rules football. This is for the seasons 2003 to 2007. So what we can do is we can read in the data which is stored separately and I'll just run the head command again to show the first few rows. So we've got the year that the match took place, the actual match date, the round of the competition, home team, away team, attendance, venue and then the score by the home and away team. So we're going to look at a very simple example. So with the dot plot we would have the home team against the attendance for the home team and this is the data set where the data comes from. So we run that and quickly look here. So we can see that there's quite a lot of variation within each team, let alone between each team. So what we might then want to do is say, well, let's have a look at how this varies over time. We've got this factor year, which basically corresponds to season. I forced it in as a factor because as it's numeric, what um, the trellis strips do, and the strips are the regions above each panel where we put in the title. So it'll just show where it is on the range 2003 to 2007 when we actually want to plot that in the title. So I run that command, take a look at the graph, and now you can see we've got a separate panel for each of the five seasons. And we can see that there's the same general pattern of attendance across all of them, with a few odd games where there's a much larger attendance. And these correspond to the postseason games, which tend to be held in larger venues. So therefore, more people can attend and more people will be interested in attending due to the nature of those matches.